everybody, Zach again, new to Torah, coming in, making a video for you today. I don't do a lot of my Torah videos out here like I'm doing right now. Um, in fact, recently I don't do a lot of my homestead videos out here like I'm doing right now. And I just made a video about that on the other channel, just talking about, you know, how things have changed. And yeah, we've, we're a homesteading channel, but, you know, I'm doing a lot of podcast type videos where... We're just talking about world events because world events are crazy. Everything's going insane. And so I'm just, I talk about some of the, the reason why I think about certain things. And the world's gone crazy. We all know that. Um, recently, we did a conference uh, with Luke and Katie Abafi. Um, and uh, there was a bunch of other speakers there. And they asked me to speak on fellowships. That was their request. They wanted me to speak on fellowships. And it was a good conference. I had a fun time. I was, I was kind of surprised by the amount of people. I thought there would be a lot more people there. And maybe that's partly my fault and some of the other speakers' fault for not promoting it. We should have promoted it more. Um, but there is a link. I'm giving you a link. If you missed the conference and you want to see what I and some of these other speakers spoke about, I'll leave a link in the description below. You can watch it. Okay? Um, and it was a good conference. It really was. But they asked me to speak on fellowships and on Sukkot and how I protect my home, the boundaries that we set up for Sukkot in our home, and how, we, how I have seen fellowships work uh, to, the, to the maximum efficiency, you know, the way I think fellowships work best. And I gave my honest opinion, and definitely some people disagree with me. That's fine. That's nothing new for me, you know, having people disagree with me. But <laughs> I don't mind being the only one in the room who's right, so it doesn't matter. Um, anyway, um, I'll give a quick shout out to their book. This one here, um, it's called The Truth. Uh, I think Luke wrote this primarily, but I'm sure his wife helped him. Um, but it's called Reformation 2.0, The Truth. And um, I really like how this is arranged. Uh, he's got the chapters arranged in, um, let me see if I can explain it to you real quick. Uh, stick with me here. He's got chapters arranged in a way, so what would Jesus do? And then also divide it up into doing what Jesus did. Because what would Jesus do is what the church usually says Jesus did, but it's not actually what Jesus did. And I, I really like how he's got these chapters arranged in that, in that fashion. It's very, very apologetics-based. And so um, I want to give a shout out to this. And the reason why I'm giving a shout out to it is because there are people in your life who are asking you, why are you doing things the way you're doing them? And this would be a great way to be like, hey, I know you may not agree with me, but if you want to get a better understanding of why I'm thinking the way I am, just check out this book and just give it a look, see, read the first chapter and you might have a better understanding. And then after they read the first chapter, they can, they can decide whether they want to keep reading it or not. But it's just, it's going to challenge them, number one. Um, it's going it, to, it, it reads very much in a way that it's not making you look crazy. So if you have somebody who's under, trying to struggle, who's struggling with how you're doing things or why you're doing certain things, this might be a great way for you to um, give them an idea. Not, not to convince them, because, you know, only the Holy Spirit can change the heart. But it may give them an idea and understanding of why you're doing things the way you're doing. And then it may challenge them. And that may allow the Holy Spirit to come in and, and change their heart. So anyway, all that to say. The reason I'm doing this video today is because there was something I really wish I could have put into that talk at that conference that I did not put in. And that is the idea of a coming persecution. During the time of that conference which I think was very appropriate, by the way, was the idea that we have, um, although basically the parable of the sower, and that how we're looking at things in the world today, we're, we should be looking at them through the lens of the parable of the sower, uh, Mark chapter 4, and then the other Gospels also have it as well. I don't think John does, but John doesn't, but Luke and uh, Matthew do. And so the parable of the sower. And in Mark chapter 4, our Messiah gives that verse where he, he basically relates the sunlight for the plant that's, you know, from the seed that's growing that plant, the plant that's coming from that seed. The sunlight is the temptation, tribulation, and persecution that we endure. And that ensures or basically tests to see if the plant and its roots run deep. 
and search for water? Does it have lack of root or not? You know, and so that, that is the sunlight of temptation, tribulation, and persecution. And something that the body is absolutely lacking right now is persecution. We're absolutely lacking that. And we need it. I'm here to tell you today, we need persecution. I don't want it. We don't want it. But we absolutely need it. You know, I mentioned in that conference, you know, one of the things I like about uh, Living Waters, even though Living Waters has definitely come out against Torah, but one, Living Waters and Ray Comfort's ministry has one of the ministries that led me to Torah based on their teachings and their use for the law to convict of sin. Psalms 19, 7, Psalms 19 verse 7, uh, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Because the Torah of the Lord is perfect and it does convert the soul. Because when you repent from breaking the law, that is true repentance and it converts the soul. And so the parable of the sower is something that Ray Comfort definitely teaches on. Um, you have this tribulation, this temptation and persecution that tests a new believer and whether or not their roots run deep. He gives the story in one of his talks, I think it's called True and False Conversion. I highly recommend it. True and False Conversion. I'm trying to figure out if someone is really true or false. Are they a real believer or not? He gives a story about during the Soviet Union, there was backroom Bible studies, underground Bible studies in house churches here and there. And there was a number of believers who were getting together for a Bible study and in walked these two Russian guards and they burst into the room and with their rifles up and they say, whoever's not prepared to die right here and now, get up and leave. If you're not prepared to die for your faith right here and now, get up and leave. And half of the people who were there got up and left. And after they left, they put their rifles down, they took their helmets off, they pulled out their Bibles and they said, before we got started, we just want to make sure we divided the sheep from the goats. I love that story because we need that now here. You know, a lot of the problems that we have seen through fellowships and Sukkots and all of these little petty arguments and petty differences that we see people dividing over will get sorted out real quick, fast, and in a hurry if we are persecuted, if we go through actual real persecution. I'm not talking about, oh, somebody hurt my feelings. My feel feels got hurt on Facebook. I'm not talking about that persecution. I'm talking about people chasing you through the woods with dogs and they're going to kill you and tie you upside down to a tree just to make an example of you to other believers, other people who may think the way you do. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how Nero fed believers to the lions. That's what I'm talking about. We need that. Because all of these petty, stupid differences will go away. Because it won't matter anymore what geography you think the earth is. It won't matter anymore what day you start your, your Shabbat. It won't matter anymore how you keep your Passover versus how someone else keeps his Passover. No, no, no. What will matter is that we believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We will not... We will not... Uh, bow down to these idols of the world and we will worship the true one true creator who sent his son to die for all of us and who's coming again very soon that that will be the, that will be all that matters at that point and so I, the reason i'm bringing this up now is because i i did not have the time because they only really wanted us to speak for 20 minutes at this conference and that was something that was sorely lacking from my talk on fellowships and Sukkotes and how I do that. I definitely, again, recommend you can find the link in the description below if you want to watch that and what I believe on fellowships. However, all that to say, what was lacking is my belief in the need for persecution. We have, if you look at the, what Mark chapter 4 in the parable of the sower talks about, sunlight being, depending on your translation, that verse, sunlight being temptation, tribulation, and persecution. We have tons of temptation here. We're surrounded by temptation. There's lust of the flesh everywhere. You can do any lust of the flesh that you want in today's age. Nothing is denied of you. Nothing. If you want it in today's world, you can get it. You can let your flesh just 
turn loose and get into whatever you want to get into. And no one will call you wrong. No one will judge you for it. Because we don't judge people. Can't do that. That's what the Christian church teaches today. But what about persecution and tribulation? Half the Christian church, most of the Christian church today, believes we're all going to be raptured out of here. They won't have to go through any tribulation. God's going to save us from that too. Wrong answer. It remains to be seen, but I believe that's the wrong answer. I, that'd be great if it, if it was the case. <laughs> but I believe that's the wrong answer. We need persecution. I go back to that movie Defiance. It was uh, starring Daniel Craig. I believe when that movie came out, it was prophetic. It's a true story. It really did happen. These Jews in World War II basically were on the run. They were running for their lives and they fought along the way. I believe in a greater exodus. I believe that's in our future. I want to be a part of it. I don't want to miss that show. I want to see it. It says, it talks about it over and over again in Scripture, Old and New Testament. Don't think for a second that I'm on this homestead because this is my, my safety place. Don't think for a second that I'm going to be somehow immune to the new world order and all that entails because I live on a homestead on a mountain in the middle of nowhere. I very much believe from the very beginning, I have believed from the very beginning of starting this homestead and moving to this place that I would have to leave this place. Because the Father's going to move his people. He's, going to, he's not going to leave us here. I'm just here because when it all kicks off, I think I have the best chance and opportunity by starting off in a place like this to see the end of the show. If I was living in the city somewhere, in the suburbs, I think my chances of seeing the end of the show with these two eyes diminishes greatly. So that's why I'm here. But I'm under no illusion that I'm going to stay here. I'm under no illusion that I may not have to run for those hills over there and hide out with my family. I'm under no illusion. I know what's coming. And I'm telling you right now, what I'm seeing, I can't talk about it on this YouTube channel, on this YouTube platform because they'll censor me and I'll probably lose my channel. But some of the things that we're seeing, that I'm seeing, I'm, I like, you know, I learned Sukkot this year. I had Sukkot and um, one of the couples came here and uh, I'm, I, I know how to play chess. I've grown, playing, I've grown up playing chess my whole life and I think it's helped me um, live a better life and st strategize my life goals and things like that and see what's going on and see what's coming and going. St learning how to play chess and knowing how to play chess will give you a heads above everybody else who doesn't know how to play chess in, in your world. Anyway, this guy shows up and within about five moves, about four, I'd say about four moves, I knew I was in serious trouble. This guy, he could play chess. I was in serious, I knew, I knew within four moves, I'm like, you're good, aren't you? You're, you're a really good chess player. I knew within four moves I was in deep trouble. <laughs> and he said, yeah, I, I'm pretty good. I said, yeah, you are. And we didn't even finish the game because I was, I was done. After, after a few more moves, maybe another half a dozen moves, it was over. It was over. Anyway, all that to say, I'm watching the chessboard right now because I know how to read a chessboard. And I know we're in serious trouble. We are in big, big trouble. And our feast days, our Moedim, our times that our Father gives us to do these, these festivals are training sessions. These are there for shadows, for things to come. And some of you guys are like, I can't go to Sukkot and I can't go without my fifth wheel. I can't go to Sukkot and live in, and live in a tent. I have to have a cabin. I have to have running water. You're in big, big trouble. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're in deep trouble. Are you not looking at the chessboard? Are you not seeing things that are coming? Because I'm telling you right now, persecution is coming. And I'm telling you that persecution is needed. It's needed. We need it. I don't want it, but we need it, and it's coming. Because the Father's got to refine us. He had, there has to be a refining fi uh, a fire for his bride. And if you're going out to Sukkot, if you're going, listen, we all, all of us, me included, we all have this sickness, and it's called comfort. You have it, I have it. We have a sickness. We have a disease called comfort. And if you can't do Sukkot 
and get out of your little comfort zone for seven days because you can't live without your comforts. You can't treat your sickness. You're in deep, deep trouble. You're not, you, there's a really good chance you're not gonna make it to the end of the show. I'm challenging you to read the chessboard, understand what's coming, because I can't, under, I, 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 it would boggle my mind for this much sin to be in the world today. I know it's a long video, we're 15 minutes in, but I'm gonna keep going. You think you're shocked by all of this trans stuff that's going on right now? It's all being forced on you and it's all being forced on your children and, all, and, and, and you, you're shocked by it. I'm telling you what's coming up next. Have you seen all the stuff about eating human beings that's been released lately? Have you seen all the stuff about furries lately? I, I was showing Morella the other day I, I, on my phone. There was an ad for a video game that you could download and the ad for the video game was this nice shapely woman figure with the head of a cat. And I said, this is where we're going. They're gonna, nor you think they've tried to normalize pedophilia and trans and all this other stuff. The next thing that they're gonna normalize is bestiality. They're gonna do it. That's what, that's what this whole furry thing is. They're, they have to put litter boxes in the public schools for the kids who think they're cats. That's what they're gonna normalize next. I'm telling you right now. The whole thing with eating people, the, all these movies being released on eating people, all this cannibalism stuff that's coming out, new shows about cannibalism. See, you can't have this much sin exist in the world and have the Father, His patience will not be long-suffering through all of this. It's been long-suffering up until now. And people will say, oh, Zach, there's always been people who thought this was the end of the world. Yeah, there's always been people who thought it was the end of the world. But there's never been this much open celebration of sin in the world. Never. It was always behind closed doors. It always was there. But now it's openly celebrated. And you're persecuted if you don't participate in it. That's the difference. That's the change. I don't see how the Father can be long-suffering through all of this. We're, I, want, I want you to see the end of the show, too. I want to see the end of the show. Not everyone's going to see the end of the show because we know there's going to be all these people before the throne saying, how much longer, Father? How much longer? Because these are the martyrs. So I know some people aren't going to make the end of the show. But I want to see the end of the show. That's why I'm positioned where I'm positioned. You're going to have to decide. Are you okay with not seeing the end of the show? I kind of want to see the end of the show. But if you want to see the end of the show, you better get your button gear and you better do the hard things now, and you better kill and cure the sickness that you and I both have called comfort. I think we'll leave it at that. All right, go home, read your Bible. Thanks.